Let's break down the body language and nonverbal cues of Fonnie Willis. I'm going to tell you what to look for, and let's see if you can find them. Then we'll go over what you're supposed to look for, and I'll explain it to you in detail. We're looking for micro expressions. Those are the really fast expressions that happen on someone's face when they're trying to hide an emotion. That's what you'll see. That's what we're looking for here are two micro expressions. So let's see if you can find them. Once the, once the motion was filed, did you meet with Mr. Wade and talk to him about the motion that I filed to disqualify you? On January, this first January motion? But, yes. I don't know if you can say talked about. Um, I probably had some choice words about some of the things that you said that were dishonest within this motion. So I don't know that it was a conversation. As you know, Mr. Wade is a Southern gentleman. I mean, not so much. All right, here comes the first one. It's a combination of disgust and anger. And at the end of it, you'll notice she does eye blocking when she closes her eyes and starts back. But she juts forward as she's doing this. It's not a whole lot. And this doesn't take very long. Sometimes micro expressions take about a tenth of a second. Some choice words about some of the things voice words about some of the things all right that was the big one here comes the small one this is a very small micro expression it happens very fast much faster than the other one but it's really close to being the very same thing so check this out this motion so i don't know that it was motion so i don't know that it was Did you see anything else? If you did, let me know in the comments. Now, we're gonna look at compressed lips, stressed mouth, disappearing lips, you've heard that a lot. What that suggests is that the person is feeling a lot of stress. As Joe Navarro says, when stress is near, the lips disappear. So that is a high indicator that she's really stressed here. I know he initially paid for it. Did you pay him back? For the cruise and for Aruba. Yeah, I gave him his money before we ever went on that trip. You gave him cash before you ever went on the trip? Mm-hmm. Okay. So here's what's going on here. The stress caused here is because she's been accused of using, of paying her boyfriend in cash when she shouldn't have been doing that. There's no record of the money she's using with him. I think you probably already know the story between the two. So that's what's happening here. That's what's causing the stress, and that's what's causing the stress mouth or the disappearing lips or compressed lips, as they're sometimes called. Yeah, I gave him his money before we ever went on that trip. You gave him cash before you ever went on the trip? Mm-hmm. His money before we ever went on that trip. You gave him cash before you ever went on the trip? Mm-hmm. This one is great because we see a cluster of cues that suggest she may be being deceptive. So what we're looking at is when she answers the question, she starts moving back, she looks away. A lot of people think when you break eye contact, that means you're lying. No, it does not mean you're lying. But look at her blink rate. Her blink rate goes way down. You think when someone's under stress, because you hear it all the time, for, for that initial question, that their blink rate would go up and you go, oh, that person's not being honest. No. Again, their brain wants to keep an eye on you to make sure you believe them. That's why her blink rate is low. Then watches her hand comes up and guards her neck. That's also a barrier. We're going to talk about that in a couple of minutes. And so when you got cash to pay him back on these trips, would you go to the ATM? No, lady. You would not go to the ATM? No. Okay. Let's watch again and see if there's anything in there you missed. This next one is another good one because we're going to see a couple of things that will suggest again that she's being deceptive. Let's pay attention to her tone of voice and how loud it is, the volume of it. And let's also pay attention to her mouth, see if anything's going on around there, and see if you can keep an eye on her neck. So the cash that you would pay him, you wouldn't get it out of the bank? I have money in my house. You have money in your house. So it was just money that was there. Quite often when we get stressed, we'll touch our mouth because that sends a signal to the brain for you to relax. When we're talking really quickly like she is, she wants to get that answer out fast because her stress level is going through the roof at this point. So she's talking really fast and she wants to get that point across because it's really important for this case. And as she gives her answer, she covers her mouth with her hand 
and, her, and then it goes up and covers her neck. It's hard to see her neck because what we do when we feel threatened, quite often we'll cover our neck, we'll guard our neck. That's really important because we're going to see something that goes along with that here in a minute. Also, there was something else in this video that I didn't bring up. Did you see it? If you did, let me know. I have money in my house. I have money in my house. I have money in my house. In this one, we're going to look for what's called a barrier. That's something, anything you put between you and the other person when you feel uncomfortable or psychologically you need a little bit of comfort. It could be a can, it could be a, a pen and paper, it could be anything between you and that person. That's one of the main things we're looking for. In this case, it's not huge, but it's going to be there and it's important. Then we're going to see the biggest neck uh, protection we've seen so far. And it's where she takes her hand and guards her whole neck. Watch for that. It's really important because when we feel threatened, really threatened, that's what we do. As you're doing this, listen to how fast she's talking. Look how her voice tone has gone up. She's getting stressed, so she's getting louder, and she sounds angry. So your office objected to us getting um, Delta records for flights that you may have taken when no, Mr. Wade. I mean, and, well, no, 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 look. Uh, I object to you getting records. You've been intrusive into people's personal lives. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. So now we're hearing the classic chaff and redirect as coined by Greg Hartley. And that's when you give a bunch of information that has nothing to do with what you're talking about in hopes those people will go with that information and start asking questions about it and take them away from the question that they've asked you. Doesn't work here. If you're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. So did you see anything else in there? Anything? If you did, let me know. Now, on this one, let's listen to her voice tone and volume. Is it loud? Is it quiet? What's going on with it? Pay attention to that. Is she touching her face anywhere that would give us the idea she may be being deceptive or need to calm down? When you touch yourself to calm down like this, or you push on your mouth, or you might rub your hand. Those are called adapters. And adapters are the way we get rid of that built up stress and tension. Did you ever pay him through Cash App? No. You only ever paid him through cash? Did you ever pay him through Cash App? No. You only ever paid him through cash? Did you see it? Not only does she touch her mouth, she presses on her lip and pulls down. That is a classic adapter. She's trying to get rid of that built up stress and tension. This question is a big deal for her, so she has to make sure it's right. And she's not confident with it at all. The no was really quiet, and it doesn't sound like she's really sure about that. But it's important that she didn't pay him with a cash app. That's where the stress is coming from. There are a couple things to look for in this one. The main thing we're going to focus on is that single shoulder shrug that goes up. That happens when someone isn't sure about their answer, they're not confident with what's going on with that answer, or they may be being deceptive with you. Watch for that and see if there's anything else in there you notice that we've talked about before. Outside of that, did you ever pay him anything other than cash? I've only given him cash a few times in, in the course of what we're talking about. So along with that single shoulder shrug, we're seeing a couple of other things. Did you spot them? One is she's protecting her neck. Another, she's touching her face. Remember, adapters, and then you're protecting your neck because you're, you're get stressed and you're afraid something's going to happen, and you start protecting yourself. She's not afraid this attorney's going to come across the table at her or anything, but she feels threatened as an animal, and that's what we do. I've only given cash a few times in, in the course of what we're talking about. So that's Behavior X. I'll see you next time.